Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I have my autumn TBR for you guys. I just recently posted an autumn books recommendations video and I thought that it was maybe a good idea to make a TBR video. But before we get into that, I am so excited because today's video has an amazing sponsor and that is book of the month oh my gosh i love book of the month so much their service is incredible and i can't believe that i get to tell you guys about them and that i get to work with them for this video i am incredibly honored so they sent me two books from their october selection and that is what is inside their amazing blue box so inside it says you have great taste and book of the month i'm sure you've heard of book of the month but if you haven't they are a super popular and fast growing book service online and their goal and mission is to help readers find new favorite books especially by new and emerging authors, which I just think is so fantastic. Each month, their team goes through hundreds of new and early release books and picks out a selection each month for you to choose from. And so in this box, I have my two choices. And what I love about their service is that when you are going through each month your TBR, what you want to read, and especially for the different seasons, I was just going through all of my books and the books on my Goodreads account that I want to make for this video for my Autumn TBR, what they do is they take away some of the work for you. They give you a curated selection of books that you get to choose from a smaller quantity, and they are these beautiful hardbacks. But anyway, so I guess what I love is that they take some of the work away for you and they give you books and the option to pick out some books that you may have not heard of from new and emerging authors and it gives you this wonderful opportunity to discover a new favorite. So anyway, the two books that I picked out, the first one is Hester, a novel by Lori Lico Albanzis. I'm so sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. I think this cover is so gorgeous and when I was reading the synopses of these, I thought that they sounded fascinating, so I'll read them to you guys. Isabel Gamble is a young seamstress carrying generations of secrets when she set sail from Scotland in the early 1800s with her husband Edward. If you know anything about me, you know I love any book set in Scotland. I have been wanting to go to Scotland for years, and so the fact that this is partially set in Scotland, I love. Anyway, so it says, An apothecary who has fallen under the spell of opium, he has piled up debts forcing them to flee Glasgow for a fresh start in the new world. But only days after they've arrived in Salem, which again, I think Salem, Massachusetts, of course, for the autumnal season, like this is so perfect. So what I love is when you're looking for autumnal reads, they already have that in mind when they are picking the certain books for particular months. So for October, they have more books that are geared towards October Halloween-ish spookier reads, which I think is such a good idea. Edward abruptly joins a departing ship as a medic, leaving Isabel penniless and alone in a strange country, forced to make her way by any means possible. And it keeps going on, but doesn't that sound fascinating? And then the next book that I picked out is Thistlefoot by Jenna Rose Nethercott. I hope I'm pronouncing her name correctly. Again, look at how beautiful these editions are. Gorgeous hardbacks. The Yaga siblings. So I believe this... I'm not sure if this is inspired by... Is it Baba Yaga? They're the house with chicken legs. I think that's um, illuminated by Jewish folklore. The Yaga siblings, Bellatine, a young woodworker, and Isaac, a wayfaring street performer and con artist, have been estranged since childhood, separated both by resentment and by wide miles of American highway. But when called to receive a mysterious inheritance, the siblings are reunited only to discover that their bequest isn't land or money, but something far stranger. A sentient house on chicken legs. Oh my gosh, this sounds so good. Thistlefoot, as the house is called, has arrived from the Yaga's ancestral home in Eastern Europe, but not alone. A sinister figure known only as the Long Shadow Man has stalked it across continents, bearing violent secrets from the past. I kind of don't want to read any more, but that sounds so good. And again, perfect for this time of year. Also, look at how cute. They give you a bookmark. I put my shelf first? That's so cute! Oh my god! I think the best thing about Book of the Month is that it is risk-free, so if you ever want to skip any month, you will not be charged at all. And so I feel like you don't have to be bound into this 
contract-like subscription service. The other thing that I love about Book of the Month is that they have the best price for new released hardbacks. These are stunning, stunning books, and you can get your first book for just $9.99 with the code, which I will put on the screen and put in my description box. A little aside that I want to just mention quickly is that a lot of my family and friends actually use Book of the Month as a service, and so I cannot recommend them enough. They are just such a fantastic service. They really care so much about what they're doing. In particular, my one cousin, Michelle, loves Book of the Month, and when I was telling her that I was working with them, she got so excited. So if I recommend it to my family and my friends, then of course I recommend them to you guys. They are just a fantastic service. I'm so excited to add these two to my autumn TBR. I love a good folklore story, especially for the autumn season, so if you are interested and you want to learn a little bit more about Book of the Month, I highly recommend you go to their website, which is bookofthemonth.com and you can get your first book for $9.99. So those are the first two books on my autumn TBR and then I have this whole big stack of books to go through. The first books that I want to talk about are the books that I'm currently reading. I also have so many books to talk to you guys about that I'm not going to go into an insane amount of detail just because we will be here all day long. I'm just going to talk a bit briefly about them. So the first book is A Game of Thrones by George R.R. Martin. You guys know if you've seen any of my recent videos that I started reading this in Canada when I was visiting Emma. She and I are both reading it and adoring it. I'm also watching the show for the first time, reading the book for the first time absolutely adoring it. Um, but I have been going a bit slower with this ever since coming home from Canada because I have started uh, two other books and I'm listening to an audiobook. So a lot of reading right now, which unfortunately Game of Thrones has kind of gone on the wayside, but I want to bring it back. What I want to do is just read it on and off and make it last as long as possible because I am adoring it. So loving Game of Thrones so, so much. Very happy that I started watching and reading it. And then the other book that I started when I was on a family holiday that will be included in a vlog. Um, that is Clara and the Sun by Kazuo Ishiguro. I also bought this in Canada with Emma and I started it recently. I love Kazuo Ishiguro. He might be one of my favorite, I was gonna say my favorite contemporary author, but I think that has to go to Frederick Bachman, which I'm going to talk to in a bit. So Frederick Bachman and Kazuo Ishiguro are battling for number one in my heart anyway, so I started Clara and the Sun and I'm adoring it. I'm about halfway through. This is about an artificial friend, a world where artificial friends are um, made to be companions for children, and it's about loneliness and friendship and this very dystopian-esque world. What I love about Kazuo Ishiguro's writing is it is kind of genreless, and he never intends for his books to have kind of a a place or an explanation or a label, and they are just they are just what they are, and I love everything that he does. Also just recently purchased his whole collection of books from the Faber and Faber editions, and I'm very excited to get those because I'm probably going to be reading more she grew out in the autumn as well. So anyway, that's Clara in the Sun. And then we have Frederick Bachman's newest book, which is The Winners, and that is the third book in the Beartown series. I just reread Beartown to get ready for the release of The Winners. I adore Frederick Bachman. He is definitely, right now, he is my favorite contemporary writer just because I've read everything that he's written except one book because I never want an unread Bachman book on my shelves. Um, but I'm so excited for the winners. I did start it. I'm only a few chapters in, but I'm adoring it so far. I definitely want to keep reading this and then finish it. It is also huge. It is 700 pages. And when I saw it in the store, I went the day that it was released to the bookstore. And when I saw that it was so long, just the feeling of joy that filled my soul <laughs> was just immeasurable. So those are the three books that I'm currently reading. And then I am listening to The Unbearable Lightness of Being by Milan Kundera. I think that's how you say their last name. I'm really enjoying it. I'm about 17% of the way through. And my favorite thing about it, it's about this main man named Tomas and his relationship with this woman, Teresa, and also his 
mistresses and these very like philosophical thoughts about existence and what I'm really loving is that when he meets Teresa she is reading Anna Karenina and they have a dog at one point they get a dog and they're deciding what to name the dog and they want to name it Tolstoy and then they're like no it's a girl we can't name it Tolstoy so then they were thinking of naming it Anna Karenina but they were saying no we can't name it Anna Karenina and they ended up naming it Karenin and and I, I love the fact that they are weaving the story of Anna Karenina into this story, The Unbearable Lightness of Being, so I'm, that's probably my favorite aspect of the book right now. Um, of course, of course it is. So yes, I'm really enjoying that. And then I actually just got notified that The Bell Jar is available because it is narrated by Maggie Gyllenhaal, and I love books that are narrated by the authors and by celebrities because they are just like beautiful productions. And so I've been wanting to read The Bell Jar for ages, but I actually don't have a copy of it. I have no idea why. Every time I go to a bookstore, I always see it and I'm like, you should just pick it up, but I never do. So I might listen to The Bell Jar for the autumnal season because it is kind of a sad girl book and so I feel like that could fit with the atmosphere of autumn. So that's another one that is on my TBR that I could start listening to very soon, but I'm already in the middle of four books, so I don't know. And Anyway, and then the next books that I have, I picked up this collection of books recently because it is Neil Gaiman's Coraline, The Graveyard Book, and Fortunately The Milk. And so they have this beautiful box set. These are all illustrated by Chris Riddell as well, which Chris Riddell is one of my favorite illustrators. He works a lot with Neil Gaiman, and I love what they do together. I can never remember if I read Coraline or not because I love the film. I think I might have read it a few years ago, but it's not, it doesn't stick in my mind. And I also haven't read the Graveyard book before, and I have no idea what Fortunately the Milk is about. Um, but it, they had this wonderful paperback box set, so I figured that I would pick it up. Coraline is one of my favorite movies in the Halloween season. Actually, I remember when Coraline the movie came out, and everyone called me Coraline. <laughs> Even though my name is Carolyn, I was thinking, well, my name's not Caroline. Like, if, if my name was Caroline, then that would make sense. Call me Coraline. But my name's Carolyn. So that didn't make sense to me. But <laughs> that's what I remember. Um, anyway, so very excited to read these. And of course, I have to read them around this time of year. The next book I picked up recently when I picked up The Winners at the bookstore, and that is Cold Enough for Snow by Jessica Ow? Ayo? I, I don't know how to pronounce your last name, it's A-U, um, and this sounds amazing. I saw it a little bit on social media, a few of the people that I follow that I trust their recommendations, um, and it sounds fantastic. I read the first page in the bookstore and I loved the sound of it. On the back it says, Winner of the inaugural novel prize, Cold Enough for Snow is an elegant and subtle exploration of the mysteries of our relationships to others. A mother and daughter travel from abroad to Tokyo. They walk along the canals through the autumn evenings, so autumn, escape the typhoon rains, share meals in small cafes and restaurants, and visit galleries to see some of the city's contemporary art. All while they talk about the weather, horoscopes, clothes, and objects, about family, distance, and memory, but uncertainties abound. Who is really speaking? And what is the real reason for this elliptical, perhaps even spectral, journey? At once a careful reckoning and an elegy cold enough for snow questions whether any of us speak a common language, which dimensions can contain love, and what claim we have to truly know another's inner world. This just sounds fantastic, and also this cover is so beautiful, so it's, and it mentions autumn, so I was thinking that this has to be read in autumn, and it is quite short, I think it's about 95 pages, so very excited to read this one. I have been getting into a lot more Japanese literature recently, especially because of Kazu Ishiguro and how much I love him and um, another book that I recently read but you can hear about that in my September wrap-up. Then the next book we are also going on to the Japanese literature still and this is Haruki Murakami's Norwegian Wood. I have been wanting to read Murakami for ages especially after hearing my best friend Emma talk so highly about his writing and seeing him all over social media and booktube and so uh, the only book that I have of his is Norwegian Wood and 
Norwegian Wood, fun fact, is my favorite Beatles song. <laughs> so for some reason, that makes me want to read it even more. Um, I don't know much about Norwegian Wood, and I kind of don't want to know anything. I've heard very different things about Kuroki Murakami's writing, and I'm very interested to see how I would feel about it. I feel like I'm going to love it, but we shall see. So I would love to read this relatively soon. And I love these editions. This is the UK cover because I think the US covers are not, not very pretty. I just do not like the US covers of Murakami's books. And I love these editions. This is from Vintage. And this is set in Tokyo. That's all that I, that's all that I want to know. So, and I think it's a coming of age. I think it's coming of age story. So yes, that is Norwegian Wood. Then the next book, this will be on my TBR until my dying day. And that is East of Eden by John Steinbeck. I've been talking about this book for literally months. So we're just going to put it on this list and not think about it because I just keep talking about it and I keep not reading it and it's getting a little ridiculous at this point. I, I want to read it soon. Who knows? Who knows if I will actually get to it. The next one is Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell by Susanna Clark. I have heard amazing things about this book. It is hefty. It is a brick. It is about magicians in England. The back says, in the midst of the Napoleonic Wars in 1806, most people believe magic to have long since disappeared from England until the reclusive Mr. Norrell reveals his powers and becomes an overnight celebrity. And that's all, that's all that I want to know. But I have heard amazing things about this book. I've also heard amazing things about Susanna Clark, and I'm very excited to read this. I also feel like this would be perfect for the autumnal winter season but again huge so have no idea when I will actually get to it but hopefully hopefully this autumn or winter the next book is stoner by John Williams I have wanted to read this book again for ages and I do feel like it gives me some moody depressing autumnal vibes and that is what I like and this is also from the New York Review books press and I love their editions. They're so nice. I still have so many to get through so I'm just going to be rattling through these really quick. The next one is The Lady of the Camellias by Alexandra Dumas Fields. So this is Alexandra Dumas's son. This also has a new translation translated by Liesl Schillinger? Schilling, Schillinger? I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Anyway, so Lady of the Camellias I believe is what inspired Moulin Rouge but I'm not 100% sure. Um, oh yes, it says on the back! One of the greatest love stories of the world, according to Henry James and the inspiration for Verdi's opera, the Oscar-winning musical Moulin Rouge, and numerous ballets, stage plays, and films. Oh my gosh, okay. The Lady of the Camellias itself was inspired by the real-life 19th century courtesan Marie... I'm not going to be able to pronounce her last name. The lover of the novel's author... Wait, the lover of the novel's author, <gasps> Alexandra, Alexandra Dumas Fuse. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, this makes me want to read it even more. Um, I was talking about this with Emma in Canada because she also wants to read it. So maybe we can read it together this autumnal season. So I will talk to her about that. The next one is Passing by Nella Larson. I have been wanting to read this book for ages as well. Passing sounds like such an incredible story and I just desperately want to read it. The next one is A Study in Scarlet by Arthur Conan Doyle. And I have yet to read any Sherlock Holmes books and I know that this is the first one so I figured I should start here um, and I thought that the autumnal season would be perfect for a murder mystery um, and starting the Sherlock Holmes stories. And then the next one is Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne Jones. I have been wanting to read this for years now, me and my other best friend Emma, who I went to university with, she and I watched the movie together and then we wanted to read the book together, but we haven't yet. That was maybe a year ago, year and a half ago, two years ago. <laughs> so I want to read this with my other friend Emma. And How's Moving Castle is such... I love Studio Ghibli movies and I loved the movie. I know the book is quite different, um, but I've heard wonderful things about it, so I will also talk to my other Emma about this one. <laughs> then the next 
book I have. This one was sent to me by a subscriber because she thought that I would love it and she loves it and I think that I will love it and I haven't read it yet and I feel bad so I want to read it. I also feel like it would be perfect for autumn and that is The City of Dreaming Books by Walter Moyers. This is a fantasy book about a fantasy book about books which I love a good book about books and this sounds amazing so it says Optimus Yarn Spinner has inherited from his godfather an unpublished manuscript by an unknown writer he sets off to track down the mysterious author who disappeared into book home the so-called city of dreaming books Yarn Spinner falls under the spell of his book-obsessed metropolis where an avid reader and a budding author can find any number of charming attractions and then it keeps going on and on. So this sounds amazing. I think it would be really cozy and wonderful and magical for the autumnal season. So I'm hoping to get to this one soon. Then we have this particular Russian classic that I have been wanting to read for so long. So, so, so long. And that is The Master and Margarita by Mikhail Bogakov. I love The Heart of a Dog. It was one of the books that I recommended in my autumn book recommendations video. And I have been wanting to read this for so long. And this part of the story is about the devil, I think, going to Moscow. And so I feel like the autumn season would be perfect to read this. It's so bizarre and crazy. Bulgakov is so wonderful at making bizarre and crazy stories. I just realized that there's a spider on my ceiling. <laughs> very uh atmospheric he's adding to the spooky vibe that we have going on even though it's not really that spooky in my room um but anyway i've been wanting to read this for so long i hope to read it soon if you stay there you're fine just don't just don't come down here <laughs> The next one I have is If on a Winter's Night, A Traveler by Italo Calvino. I've been wanting to read more Italian literature, and every time I talk about Italian literature, you guys recommend Calvino, so I want to read particularly um, If on a Winter's Night, A Traveler because I've had this one on my shelves for quite a while, and the concept sounds amazing. I love how it opens. I just feel like this is one of the greatest openings of all time. You are about to begin reading Italo Calvino's new novel, If on a Winter's Night a Traveler. That's literally the first sentence, I love it. Relax, concentrate, dispel every other thought, let the world around you fade. Best to close the door, the TV is always on in the next room, tell the others right away. No, I don't want to watch TV, raise your voice. They won't hear you otherwise, I'm reading, I don't want to be disturbed. Maybe they haven't heard you, with all that racket, speak louder, yell. I'm beginning to read Italo Calvino's new novel. Or if you prefer, don't say anything. Just hope they'll leave you alone. That's the first paragraph. I just think that sounds amazing. So I don't know if this is, should be better for a winter read because it's called If on a Winter's Night Traveler, but it's on my autumn TBR. I'll probably get to it in winter by, by the time, you know. I, you know me. I put books on my TBR. Do I read them? Sometimes, most of the time, I just keep putting them off you know, like what I'm doing with East of Eden. <laughs> and then I have two more books. The next one is The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna. I really like Kristen Hanna, in particular her older works. I love The Nightingale and The Great Alone, and this is her most recent publication. I think I might listen to the audiobook, just because I have so many other books that I kind of want to prioritize a little bit more over this one. So that's what I'm thinking for this one, but I did find it for $2 at my library's used bookshop, so which is just so nice. It's in perfect condition, this beautiful hardback. Don't know too much about it, but I don't want to know too much. So yes, that's not very helpful for you. <laughs> But I don't really want to know anything going in. And then the last one that I have, Emma and I, Emma in Canada, and I have been wanting to read the Witcher books for a while. And I, what I told her that I wanted to read the short story collection first until we, and then we can go into the whole series because everyone recommends to read the short story collection first. So that is The Last Wish. This is a beautiful illustrated edition, which I got at Barnes and Noble. And it's just so beautiful. There is one of the illustrations. It's so cool. It's like in this beautiful red tone. And anyway, yeah, so I love The Witcher series on Netflix. And I really want to read the book series. And Emma also really wants to read the book series. So I told her that I wanted to read this first. So... 
Hopefully I'll get to this soon, but I don't know if I want to read it at the same time that I'm reading Game of Thrones. I kind of want to keep my fantasies separate, so I probably won't read this until I'm done with Game of Thrones, but maybe I'll read this when I finish Game of Thrones. That's what I'm thinking. Anyway, so that is the last book on this list. Oh my gosh, so many books. How many books here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Wow, that's a lot. So anyway, that is it for this video. I again want to say a huge thank you to Book of the Month. Again, if you're interested in checking out the other October picks and getting yourself a subscription, then you can go over to bookofthemonth.com and you can use the code to get your first book for $9.99, a beautiful hardback. And I'm so excited about these. I'm so excited about all of these books. And I love the autumnal season. It's one of my favorite reading seasons. So very eager to pick all these books up. Will I get to all of them? Most certainly not, um, but these are the ones that I'm interested in, so I figured I would share that with you. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. I would love to know what books you want to read this autumn season, so let me know what your TBR is in a comment down below. I would love to hear and get other recommendations and ideas. Maybe I could add on some books to my own list, even though 20 books that I won't get to, but anyway. <laughs> so I hope you're having a fantastic day, reading some amazing books, and I will see you soon in another video. Happy reading!